I'm going to teach you how to clean up your topology in Blender so that you can make triangulated models or FBX files that you downloaded from somewhere usable in Blender. I got this model right here from one of my patrons and he wanted to get some tips for how to properly take care of a problem like this. He made this model inside of a CAD program and then he wants to bring it into Blender so that you can do some more work on it inside Blender. The problem is you can't really do shit on a model like this in Blender because what are you going to do? You want to UV unwrap it? Well, look what happens. Normally when you UV unwrap something, you're going to go alt right click on edges like this and you're going to go all the way around the surface so you can mark some edges as seams, which is going to allow you to UV unwrap this. But when you try to alt right click or select some edges, it just selects some random shit and most of the time you can't even see what you're supposed to be selecting because of the concentration of these edges. This in itself makes it almost impossible to UV unwrap this model. Another problem with this type of geometry is that if you use smooth shading, you're gonna get a whole lot of artifacts such as this right here. Now this particular model isn't even that bad because the shading overall is still quite good but on the underside you can see something that can go wrong when you have bad topology. I don't even want to talk about the subdivision surface modifier because in this case if I apply one, Blender just crashes. But you can only imagine what's gonna happen if you apply a subdivision surface modifier to something like this it's probably going to be a complete atrocity so i'm gonna give you a couple of tips for how you can get this type of topology under control so that you can work with it a little bit more easily first of all you want to get rid of all these super long triangles especially on flat surfaces these triangles are preventing you from being able to select anything so if you get rid of that it's going to be a big step in this case for example i'm going to use my brush select tool with c and in face select mode i'm just going to click and drag along a surface like this and once i select a little surface i'm going to press x dissolve faces this is going to turn all those triangulated faces into one single surface this is called an n-gon this is still considered to be bad topology but in this case it's still a lot better than what we had before now you can just select multiple sections press x dissolve faces and just try to do that a couple of times around the entire model you won't be able to turn everything into an n-gon because for example these faces right here have a circular hole in them we can't turn those into a single face because blender can't place a hole there if there's not an edge connecting it to the outside so in this case we we gotta keep a couple of edges maybe with x you can dissolve some more edges manually but you're gonna have to keep some connecting edges like this the good thing about this particular model is that in face select mode i can just hover over a surface and press l that's going to select that entire surface without the bevels around it now i don't know the answer to the following question but it's still something that we gotta talk about so tell me in the comments if you know this if you have any experience with a cad program is there a setting inside cad programs which allows you to separate the surfaces from the bevels as you can see in this case these surfaces are clearly separated which makes it a lot easier to work with them in blender if there is a setting that does this please tell me about that setting in the comments so other people who watch this video can know about that and they can know that you can use this feature to help you when you're trying to do retopology inside of blender otherwise if we don't have the separation between the surfaces and the bevels which in this case would happen if we select everything and merge by distance then it becomes almost impossible to select surfaces and we really have to do everything completely manually so maybe there's a feature that does this for you maybe it's an add-on or something maybe a difference from program to program I don't know please let me know in the comments anyway since i have the separation between the surfaces i can very easily just select this with l lift it up and that makes it a lot easier to work with this surface i can just select one part as all faces select another part as all faces and it makes the whole thing a lot faster now having n-gons like this is not ideal topology ideal topology if you will is called sub d workflow this means that you're only gonna have nice square tiles over your model everything is gonna flow perfectly there's not gonna be any weird edge loops that's the ideal best type of workflow to follow in blender for modeling and that's the only way you can get what you would call a perfect 3d model this is a real pain in the ass to do it takes a very long time to do this it's extremely tedious thomas colin 3d is an expert at doing that for example go watch his karambit video where he made the handle for the karambit look how messed up that shape is and look how hard it is to make that type of geometry in this case it would take about 10 years to do this on this model so instead for the most part we're gonna try to work with large end gones like this this is good enough because now we can take some edges like this for example we can extrude them down we can also take these edges around the outside extrude them up now we have this wall on this side we have the holes over here and we can actually do something with this model Right now, the shading is a complete atrocity. So we're going to select this sharp edge right here. Press Ctrl E, mark sharp. Do the same thing on these sharp edges over here. And a quick way to do that is to just select one sharp edge loop. Then go Shift G, select similar face angles. Then again, Ctrl E, mark sharp. And now this in itself probably won't fix your shading because you have to go up here to Object, Shade Auto Smooth. This Shade Auto Smooth function tells Blender to shade some surfaces smooth, such as, for example, these curved surfaces up here. But we don't want everything to be smooth, as would happen if you 
use the shade smooth setting because we need to exclude some edges like this from the smooth shading. We don't want these edges to be smooth, we want these to be sharp, otherwise we're gonna have these horrible shading artifacts. So instead we tell Blender to exclude some edges from the smooth shading. Now normally when you use shade auto smooth, Blender keeps the sharp edges sharp, but only edges which have a certain angle are going to be smooth. By default the smooth angle is set to 30 degrees, which means that any faces which have less than 30 degrees between the normal lines are going to be smooth. In this case these are the normal lines, as you can see the angle between these normal lines is very low, so these can be shaded as smooth. By default any angle less than 30 degrees is going to be smooth. On the sides here the angle is 90 degrees, so that's not going to be smooth. But of course you can change this angle to anything that you want, which can be very useful for controlling different details over the object. Now sometimes shade auto smooth just isn't going to work automatically, because you have all kinds of angles, some of them you want sharp, some of them you don't want sharp. So you can manually tell Blender which edges you want to be sharp. And if you want Blender to only manually detect sharp edges, meaning that you only want sharp edges where you mark them, you can just go to object shade auto smooth, set the angle all the way up to 180 degrees, and then you just have to select the sharp edges manually, and go to control E, mark sharp, and now only the blue lines which are called sharps are going to be excluded from smooth shading. That's exactly what we're going to do down here, and that works best for this particular situation. Now that we have some cleaner topology, we can also very easily select this outer edge loop here, and with control B we can add a bevel right there. That's going to bring it closer to the model that we have before. To prevent shading issues like this, you might have to clear the sharps on a bevel, but that gives you more shading problems. So one way to fix this is to first add a bevel which has two segments and a shape value of one. That gets the shading under control, and then you can add another bevel on the inside of this bevel. Now you can use as many segments as you like and bring the shape back to 0.5 to make this round. Now you can get rid of your sharps with control E clear sharp and you're still gonna have perfect shading on your model. It's also very easy to UV unwrap this now because you can very easily select sharp edges, mark seam, and overall it's much easier to work with this now. So what happens when you have a curved surface such as this one right here? Well obviously we can't just dissolve faces because that's gonna give us a complete mess. This is where things get extremely tedious, so you gotta have patience if you wanna do this. In a case like this, we can just select this little surface with L, we're going to lift this up so we can work on it separately. I'm even going to duplicate this so I have a backup in case I mess something up and I need to return to the old shape that I had. And now first of all I'm going to select all the edges on the inside, press X to delete edges, and now we have to connect this a little bit better. So to connect this we're obviously gonna need quads only. But to do that, we're gonna have to have the same number of vertices on one side and the other side. You can check the number of vertices by going up here to viewport overlays, check statistics, and now you can see how many total vertices and edges and whatever you have in your object versus how many are selected. If we select this, we can see that we have 42 out of 107 edges selected, which means if we want to connect this to the other side, we also have to have the same number of edges over here on the other side, except we have 65 edges here. So either we can select some random vertices over here and dissolve them until we have 42 edges here, and then we can go to W, loop tools, space. Now all these edges are equally long and balanced, and we can very easily connect these two by selecting them and going W, bridge edge loops. If you don't have your loop tools when you press W, you won't have this add-on available if you don't have your loop tools add-on activated. To do that, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in loop, and check this box right here. I'm using an older version of Blender, so for me it's W loop tools, but you can also find these tools in edit mode if you press N. That opens up this menu on the side. If you go to the edit section, you're going to find your loop tools over here. Here you have a whole bunch of tools that can help you clean up your geometry a little bit. I covered all of these individually in depth in my ebook, but I use these tools all the time in my tutorials, so you can also find them in there. Anyway, W bridge edge loops, otherwise go to edge bridge edge loops, and now we have a nice clean surface as opposed to this one over here. Another thing that you might be able to do is delete one side, then extrude right click and push it out, but in this case the edge loop on the right has to have a certain shape. You can see that down here we can't just extrude this edge because it's not going to align with the surface on the side. To fix that you can select this surface here, press shift D to duplicate it and then with P separate it to new object. We can dissolve a lot of these faces to make this a little bit easier to work with. Now place the 3D cursor on this surface, set the pivot point to 3D cursor, scale this surface up so that it cuts through this surface which we made a moment ago, then select the surface which does the cutting. In the modifier menu add a boolean modifier, set that to difference and use this eyedropper to target the surface which we just extruded here. Apply the boolean modifier, now select one and select the other and with control J join 
turn them into the same object. Now you can delete this geometry in the back, take this edge loop which was created on the cutting face and the other one that we have on this side, W, bridge edge loops, and you can just delete everything else. Now your geometry connects perfectly and this edge loop is aligned with the surface over here on the side. Obviously there's a bevel here so there's still gonna be some more work to do here, which means you might have to do the same thing on the inside here on a couple more surfaces, but just keep in mind that this feature exists and you can do this in some cases. Another tip that I'm going to give you is how to create bevels like this which have a various width. As you can see this bevel here is quite narrow up here on top, but then it gets a little bit wider as we get down to the bottom of this shape. So let's create a simple scenario to demonstrate how we can achieve this. So let's say that I want to bevel this edge over here, and I want the bevel to be very thin at the top, but I want it to be a lot thicker down here. There are two ways that you can do this. One way is using a bevel modifier, and the other way is using manual beveling. I'm going to show you both ways. First of all, let's go to add modifier, bevel, and that's going to automatically bevel all the edges on this shape. Now by default, some edges are excluded from beveling based on their angle. It's similar to smooth shading. Some edges such as this one over here are not beveled, but the sharp edges are beveled. Over here, you can control the segments to make this smoother. You can control the size of the bevel. You can also control the shape of this bevel. You can even make it go inwards. But the problem is that the width is equal in all angles. But if we switch this limit method to weight, all of a sudden the bevel disappears. Now only edges which have a bevel value added to them are going to be beveled. At the moment, no edges have this, so let me show you how to do this. In edit mode, we can select this edge right here, then press N, and in the item menu over here, you're going to find mean bevel weight. You can increase this value, and now these edges are going to have a weight for the bevel modifier, which means the bevel modifier recognizes these edges have to be beveled. You can reduce this to make the bevel smaller, you can increase it to make the bevel larger. Take this value here as a factor of this amount that we placed here. This is the maximum. If we set it to one, we have 100% of this width. If we set it to half, we have half of this width and so on. Naturally, you can control this value for every single edge individually. So for example, we're going to set the mean bevel weight to something quite high over here. And then we're going to select the edges up here and we're going to reduce the mean bevel weight to something lower. Then deselect another edge and reduce it even further. Deselect another one and reduce it again. And if you play around with these bevel values a little bit, you're going to be able to create a bevel which is very wide on one part and very narrow on another part. I don't like to use this function because it's very difficult to control precisely. It's hard to get a lot of contrast between the width of the bevel. Maybe I'm just not that good at it, but here's the method that I prefer. Again, let's say we want to take this edge right here. We want a bevel which is very wide on this side, but very narrow on this side over here. So first of all, we're going to select this edge right here and duplicate it with Shift D, then right click to snap it back into place so it doesn't move anywhere, but it's still duplicated. Then take the edge under it, which is connected to the surface around it, and with Control B, we're going to create a bevel. I'm going to start with something narrow like this. It's up to you how many segments you want. And now it's very easy to manually adjust the size of each part of this bevel. To do that, we can place the 3D cursor on this vertex, for example. Make sure the 3D cursor is the pivot point, so now everything that you scale is scaling towards or away from the 3D cursor, which means if we select this bevel, we can just scale this up by something like 1.3, and this part is going to be a little bit wider now. Then we can move to the next segment with Shift S, snap the cursor to the selected, then select this, press S to scale, and scale this one by, let's say, 2. And you can just keep doing this and adjusting every part of the bevel to anything that you want. That gives you great control over your bevel with and you can do whatever you want like this. So I showed you how to get messy geometry under control. I showed you how to improve the topology on curved surfaces like this. I showed you a couple of tricks to align the geometry on different parts of this surface. We talked about smooth shading, beveling, and we talked about bevels with various widths. Those are just a couple of general retopology tips that I wanted to show you guys today. If you want another tutorial with more tips, then let me know in the comments. Like I said, this is a very tedious process and if you want to do this right, it's going to take a very long time. Now here's another thing that you have to keep in mind you might not need this to be completely the same model as this one right here. So it's not that important that it's extremely accurate. If you're not trying to be extremely accurate, and it doesn't matter whether the measurements are exactly the same, then this is going to be a lot faster, and you can just quickly recreate something in the ballpark of this object. Anyway, this is a pretty complicated topic, so if you're a beginner, this is probably quite hard to follow. And especially if you're a beginner, this type of work is a great way to lose your mind. So just be patient when you're doing this. Once you get the hang of it, you can move quite quickly, but it is going to take some time most likely. Let me know in the comments if you got any questions. Also, make sure to join my Discord because we can talk about this shit more thoroughly over there. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.